Hi, it's Chris here. So you've just gone through all of the videos in the Learn Swift for Beginners series. Now there's 17 in total so far, and although there's a lot more to learn with Swift programming, you do know a lot already to be dangerous and to do quite a bit with it. So in this video, I'm going to introduce to you three programming challenges uh, that you can do today, uh, just using what you've learned so far. And they're very, very doable, so don't shy away from them. And they're going to help you reinforce what you already know, uh, help you identify things that you might not have grasped. And furthermore, it helps you memorize all of the syntax and the, uh, the structure of the programming language, all the keywords and things like that. I tell you this from first-hand knowledge because when I learned iOS programming, I just read a book front to back. And when I tried to build something, I realized that I couldn't remember a lot of what I read. So it wasn't until I started typing things out, hitting roadblocks and, you know, actually physically typing it out, did everything start to glue and meld together in my mind. So these exercises are going to help you do that. And furthermore, once you complete these three challenges, you can get your name and a link to your Twitter profile listed right here below this section in our wall of fame. Now, right now there's nobody because I'm just launching this page today. And all you have to do is complete the three challenges up here. And then you're going to click this blue button to tweet this out and proclaim your victory and also to notify me. So I'm going to add your name manually down here and you will be immortalized on this Learn Swift page. So the URL for this page is in this description below. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're already on this page, then you just need to scroll down. The URL is codewithchris.com slash learn dash swift. Okay, now I'm also going to quickly go through the three challenges with you just to introduce them and to tell you what you have to do. Or you can just go ahead, jump to the page right now and download these files because there are instructions in each of these files. Okay, so let's just hop into the first playground here. You're going to need um, Xcode in order to complete these challenges. So for challenge one, you've got two arrays with a bunch of strings in each array. And what I want you to do is to write a function that accepts a single string parameter. And this function is going to output true or false. If the input string is in either of the two arrays, then return true. Um, if the input is not in any of the arrays, is not in both of the arrays at all, then return false. So here are two examples. If it's cat, then you would return true because it's here. If it's cow, cow is in neither of these arrays, so you're gonna return false. Okay, so you might have to go back and review the syntax to write a function and to write parameters and such, uh, but it's going to be good practice for you. Okay, so here's the second one. It's going to get a little bit harder with each one. So this one, I'm giving you a class called string caterpillar, and I want you to implement the add function and the go function. So the add function takes in a piece of text and what you're going to do is you're going to store that piece of text. Every time add is called and this an, a piece of text gets passed in, you're going to store that piece of text somehow. And then when someone calls the go function, you're going to output uh, all of the pieces of text that have been added by this add function. You're going to output them all in one line using a print statement. So this is the, uh, the code statements that are going to get executed. You don't have to edit any of this. All you have to do is, you know, you're going to be completing this part right here, this class definition. So given this code, declaring a new string caterpillar object and then adding H, adding E, L, L, O, and then calling go, the expected output down here in the console would be hello. And then there's some bonus credit if you want to create a custom initializer that where you can pass in a string so you can read about that okay so the third one is right here and this one's a little more complicated so what we have here we have a person class you don't need to do anything with this it's got uh, a name property and you've got a book class it's got title and author you don't have to do anything with this class either 
But what you do have to do is you have to implement this class called library. So this library has got two dictionaries. Okay, so one dictionary here is the library catalog. So it's got this book ID and then as the key and then the value is an actual book, right? And the book object obviously has a title and an author. So here's another book. That's the book ID and that's the book object with uh, the title and the author. And then we've got another dictionary that so far is empty. The key is a string. It's going to be the book ID. And the value is a person object, which represents the person who has checked out that book. And I want you to implement a couple of functions here, a few. Uh, the first one is search by title. You're going to pass in a uh, title of a book. Now, that's not the book ID. Okay, that's the actual title. And you have to implement this code which checks for several things. So first of all, if the book ID is not, or sorry, the book title is not in the catalog at all, um, if it doesn't exist in this catalog dictionary, then you return the string not in catalog. Now, if it is in the catalog and it's available, then you return the string available. And if it is checked out by someone, then you put checked out by and then the name. So this, you're not going to put N-A-M-E here. You're going to put the actual name of the person that exists in this property right here. Remember, you do have this dictionary which contains, you know, the person object that checked out the book. So you're going to have to check both dictionaries. And that's a little hint for you. And next, you're going to implement two other functions, check out and check in. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory here. Again, if the book doesn't exist in the catalog, you shouldn't be able to check it out. So you're going to return the string book doesn't exist. Uh, if the book is currently already checked out and it, it does exist in the catalog, then you're going to return error colon book already checked out. And finally, if the book um, is in the catalog and it is available, as in it's not checked out by anybody yet, then you're going to return successfully checked out. You're going to actually um, add the person to the dictionary. And well, I don't want to give too much away, but that <laughs> this is essentially what you want to output given this case. And check in similar. I'm not going to go through it. Pretty much the opposite of check out. You're going to be returning the book. And again, that's all. Um, all you're editing is this stuff in the library class definition. You don't have to modify anything below here. This is just the, the sample statements and the expected output. So here we're going to declare a new library. We're going to declare two borrowers, Curious George and Mark Twain. And then there's going to be a bunch of statements. Um, and it's going to do the printing of the result that comes back from the functions you're going to implement. And this is the expected output that you should see from that print statement. Then it's going to execute this one and print it out. And you're going to, you know, look in the console down here uh, to see this message. So what you want to do is implement um, the functions up here in the library class. And if you've done it correctly, you know, returning the correct output here, depending on the scenarios, then running this series of statements, you're, it's going to yield the, um, the expected output in the console. So you can check that. Now, once you've successfully completed all of the challenges, what I want you to do is go back down to the wall of fame here and click this button. It's going to, you know, launch a little window and you can tweet. It's going to notify me. I'm going to see it. Uh, I'm going to add your name and your profile below here in the wall of fame. And it's also going to help me get the word out uh, for this page a little bit more so I can grow the Code with Chris brand. So I do thank you for that. And I thank you for learning with me. So go ahead, give it a try. If you get stuck, um, comment here in this page below. I'll help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.